Hello everybody, I am Frédéric Barré from INRAE in France. Uh, I will present a study called uh, High Throughput Estimates of the Radiation Interception and Use Efficiency in Weak Crops. This study has been conducted with Shou uh, Yang Liu, Marie Weiss and Benoît de Solan and Pierre Martre uh, from mostly INRAE as well as PPRC, uh, so the Plant Phenotyping Research Center in Nanji. Wheat is one of the main crops cultivated. It is the third crop cultivated in the world. It is grown under a very wide range of climate, soil and management conditions. Improvement of yield is mainly achieved through two main processes. The total amount of biomass produced and the harvest index. Uh, the harvest index is uh, the yield divided by the total biomass produced. So currently emphasis was put on the harvest index by breeders but the uh, limit seems to be reached uh, soon, between 50 or 60 percent of the total biomass can be uh, uh, transferred to, to the grains to, to make the yield. So the um, only way to improve the yield is to improve the total amount of biomass produced by, by the crop. And so breeders probably should pay now more attention to uh, increase the total amount of biomass produced. Plants are mostly capturing light to uh, make uh, biomass from the photosynthesis processes. So it's capture uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the soil and then form the sugars to release uh, oxygen. Um, since 1977, um, a very simple efficiency model can describe the uh, accumulation of biomass. So the accumulation of biomass is mostly uh, the total amount of photosynthetic active radiation incoming and intercepted or absorbed by the canopy multiplied by the light use or radiation use efficiency. So in this simple equation, you have at least two efficiency factors. One is the radiation use efficiency, RUE, and the other is uh, radiation interception of absorption efficiency. In this case, uh, the fraction of absorbed photosynthetically active radiation. So the radiation use efficiency from this simple equation can be measured by uh, computing the ratio between the total amount of radiation absorbed by the canopy divided by the total amount of biomass. The fraction of absorbed radiation depends on illumination conditions and canopy architecture. So the illumination conditions are mostly described by the diet fraction. So it's uh, zero um, when there are clouds uh, in the sky and it's uh, almost close to one or let's say 10% uh, or 90% when it's uh, uh, mostly coming from the the sun under clear sky conditions. And of course, the position of sun also is, is very important to account for. Regarding the canopy architecture, there are two main um, variables or parameters that, can, that need to be accounted for. One is the average inclination angle, and the other is the green array index. So the green array index is defined as the amount of the area of uh, green elements per unit uh, ground area. It's uh, expressed in square meter per uh, square meter, square meter of elements, green elements per square meter of ground. Uh, as you can see on, on these uh, figures, the fraction of absorbed radiation depends uh, for a given sun direction on the green area index and on the average inclination angle. It increases with the Green area index reaching a maximum value close to one for green area index of uh, let's say around three, four uh, green square meter of elements per ground square meter. Um, and it, it also increases um, with the leaf uh, inclination 
uh, for uh, relatively uh, high zenith angle of the sun and it uh, decreases with uh, the average inclination angle for uh, relatively um, low sun angle, that means sun angles that are quite uh, close to, to nadir directions. Um, of course, there is a large variability of uh, illumination conditions between days, but between locations as well, and also during the day. You have here for wheat at the tearing stage an example of the evolution of the fraction of absorbed radiation with its different components. So the direct components, the, the one coming from the sun, the contribution from the sun, and the diffuse component, which is uh, here, uh, of course, stable. The fraction is stable across the day, but the fraction of direct uh, radiation increases here uh, on clear sky condition with, with, uh, with time in the morning and then decreases in the afternoon as compared to a cloudy condition where uh, the direct component is almost uh, zero and uh, the, the uh, diffuse component is uh, contributes uh, the more to, to the total amount of, of radiation. Uh, you have here another example, the stem elongation stage. So, uh, later in the growth season, where the, the fraction of absorbed radiation is almost saturated, so close to one, all the radiation is absorbed by the canopy. And of course, in this case, it, the, the importance of the canopy, uh, of the illumination, the illumination conditions is not very, uh, very important. It is very important to get accurate FAPAR values to uh, better understand the biomass accumulation. We have here uh, some results from uh, model simulations. It's uh, the serious quality crop growth model that simulates uh, the accumulation of biomass or the functioning of the canopy, uh, depending on the climate and, and the soil and the management uh, techniques. Uh, the simulation have been done here for five locations from uh, high latitude sites in Finland at 61 degree latitude down to uh, low latitude uh, locations in uh, Sudan at 14 degree latitude. And you can see here, depending on the way we describe the uh, light interception in, or absorption in the model, you have here five different uh, ways to, uh, to compute the, uh, the light uh, uh, absorbed or intercepted by the canopy. And you can see here in relative values of uh, biomass accumulation for the whole growth season, you can see very large uh, differences, almost uh, 40 40% 40 or 45% in, in some specific uh, conditions and specific models. So this is very important uh, conditions. How can we measure FAPAR, the fraction of absorbed radiation? So one usual way is to make a radiation balance. So we measure the incoming radiation, uh, we measure the reflected radiation, we measure the transmitted radiation, and we measure the radiation that is absorbed by the soil, by the background, uh, which is a transmitted radiation multiplied by uh, the, the fraction that is absorbed, which is one minus the, the fraction that is reflected or by, by the canopy. So the, the fraction of absorbed radiation can be uh, computed using this simple equation. And you can see here the variation of the different terms. Uh, so the transmittance is dropping with the increase of greenery index. The reflectance uh, is changing, is decreasing slightly, but not, not very much with, uh, with the growth of the wheat. And as a result of this equation, the FAPAR is increasing a lot with uh, the growth, uh, the development of the leaf area, and then with some saturation here close to uh, 0 0.9, and then the drop uh, with the senescence. You can see here that the drop is not very important. It's not very important because um, all the elements are contributing to the uh, 
uh, fraction of absorbed radiation when you measure the, the, the balance, the radiative balance. Uh, but um, actually, when we want to compute uh, uh, the fraction of absorbed for photosynthesis, it's important to make a difference between the green and non-green elements. And in these techniques, we, it's not possible to make a distinction with the green and non-green elements. Further, this technique is low throughput because you need to put uh, small sensors in each of your microplots. You need to repeat those sensors to have many uh, replicates of those sensors because these are small sensors and they are not very representative. And as I told you uh, previously, there is the impact of the senescent leaves at the bottom of the canopy that is not accounted for. So for this reason, um, we prefer to use another uh, proxy of the fraction of absorb, which is a fraction of intercepted radiation. You can see here on those simulations that the fraction of intercepted radiation is a very close assumption, a very close approximation of the fraction of absorb radiation. For low chlorophyll, even for low chlorophyll content um, values, when the uh, leaf, leaves are more uh, reflecting and, and transmitting more light, so probably contributing more to multiple scattering, uh, the difference here is, is very uh, small between the fraction of intercepted radiation and the fraction of absorbed radiation. And this is due to the fact mostly that um, the leaves are strongly uh, absorbing radiation uh, because of the strong absor absorption of the chlorophyll and pigments. And these techniques, when measuring the fraction of intercepted radiation from the top of the canopy, so looking downwards, um, allows to avoid accounting for the senescent leaves. So taking just the green leaves into account, uh, and the green leaves, uh, as I, I said previously, contribute to the photosynthesis mostly. How can we model the, the fraction of intercepted par radiation? So, as, as, as you can see, uh, the architecture depends of the canopy depends strongly on the, the way the leaves are uh, oriented in the space, uh, and mostly the how they are inclined. And you can see here that um, when when we measure precisely the uh, distribution of the, the inclination of the different elements. Uh, this distribution follow what we call an ellipsoidal distribution. So it's, it's a distribution of the facets over an ellipsoid uh, of revolution. It's, uh, so it allows to, um, with a single uh, parameter, which is the average inclination angle, to describe the, the whole distribution of the elements. The other aspect that is uh, very important is how the, the elements are distributed in space. So if we compare uh, the actual distribution of the, the, the leaf of wheat and, and the stems of wheat in, in space to uh, a turbine medium distribution where the elements are randomly distributed in the canopy volume, uh, in terms of the, the, the fraction of intercepted radiation, it makes almost no difference. You can see here the difference um, between uh, the relationship between the fraction of intercepted radiation and the green area index in the case of the turbine medium, which is a solid line, and in the case of the 3D uh, model, which represents a very realistic case of uh, wheat canopy architecture. As a consequence of that, we can uh, compute easily the fraction of intercepted radiation as one minus uh, exponents of uh, g of uh, the function g, which is called the projection function, as a function of theta, the sun position, the average inclination angle described by an ellipsoid, uh, an ellipsoid ellipsoidal distribution function, and the green line index. And you divide that by the, the cosinus of the sun inclination uh, zenith uh, angle uh, to account for, for the path length in the canopy. 
GEI and the average inclination angle can be derived from green fraction. As a matter of fact, the green fraction in a given direction is the same as the fraction of intercepted radiation in the same direction. So we can use the same model to uh, uh, relate the green fraction or the fraction of intercepted radiation to the average inclination angle and the green area index. Uh, this is illustrated over a uh, given example here for wheat uh, by the relationship between the green fraction at a given at a 57 degree where it's no more dependent on the average inclination angle and the green area index. And the, the green fraction can be derived from several sensors. It can be derived from high resolution RGB imagery by classific classifying the green pixels. It can be derived from multispectral imagery using, for example, vegetation indices uh, that are calibrated to uh, estimate the green fraction using those uh, empirical transfer functions. We can use uh, as well the LiDAR 3D point cloud by eliminating the background using the height measured by the LiDAR and, uh, and eliminating the senescent elements using the intensity of the return uh, laser beam. What is the optimal observation configuration to derive GEI, the average inclination angle, and as a consequence, the fraction of intercepted radiation from the green fraction? So in this case, we consider that we can estimate very well these with just two cameras oriented in two different directions. So we made uh, radiative transfer model simulations with a Turing medium assumption to identify the best couple of directions to derive green area index, average inclination angle, and the corresponding fraction of intercepted radiation. For green area index, we see that the optimal configuration is a, a camera looking at 30 degree inclination and another one looking at 60 degree inclination. Uh, for the average inclination angle, uh, we need a better a camera inclined at 15 degrees angle and the other at 60 degrees. But when we are combining the two uh, to estimate the fraction of intercepted radiation, we see that it's much better to get uh, a camera at zero, zero degree inclination and the other close to 45 degree inclination. So the optimal combination appears to be zero and 45 degree to estimate the Fe power. And this is also optimal because at zero degree, you can estimate other traits. Uh, so of course you can have the cover fraction. You can have uh, also um, um, the, the, you can estimate uh, the, the chlorophyll content and other traits. And at 45 degrees, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, you can estimate, for example, uh, um, probably you can, you, you can measure, count the plants. Uh, at early stages, and also when, when you have uh, relatively small micropods, uh, small width, um, then if you have very inclined uh, directions, it, it's quite difficult to make the measurements because uh, the observations will be contaminate, contaminated by, by the uh, other microplots close by. Uh, these findings were validated uh, from uh, 3D model simulations using the Adelwitt uh, architecture model that allows to derive a 3D um, very realistic description of the canopy architecture and its dynamics. That's why it's 4D. It can be coupled with a Raytron, which is a rendering machine that allows to derive, uh, to compute the, the images corresponding to a uh, uh, to these scenes, uh, same Im images as a uh, RGB camera uh, could get on the same scenes. And you can see that to estimate uh, the green area index, it's, it's quite efficient using the two directions, 0 and 45 degrees. It's a bit less accurate for the average inclination angle because this, uh, because the green fraction is less uh, sensitive to the average inclination angle. But when we recombine the two 
uh, green air index and average inclination angle into the fraction of intercepted radiation, we get a very nice and, and very accurate relationship between the estimated one and the reference one. So we can we can get very accurate estimates of Fe bar. This has been also validated over actual experiments. This is for the green air index, when you can see a close, very close uh, relationship between uh, the reference measured in the field by the selective measurements and uh, the estimated from the green fraction at 0 degree and 45 degrees. And, and finally, for, for uh, wheat crops uh, with uh, radiative balance measurements in the PAR, Uh, during the first stages where the, there is not too much senescence, you can see also a quite fair relationship between the estimated values from the two directions and the one estimated from, um, sorry, the measured values by, by the uh, additive balance and the estimated one uh, from the measurement of the green fraction in the two directions. This means that we have a very good consistency with the previous theoretical results. The green, green fraction can be measured with uh, several sensors and systems. It can be measured with uh, handheld systems like literal, with uh, uh, sensors on, on a tractor. It can be measured with Phenomobile, which are fully automatic uh, robots, or on gantry systems. You have here examples of uh, the green fraction evolution during the growth period for wheat during different years for two modalities, one irrigated, one non-irrigated. And you can see that we can derive quite uh, nice uh, uh, dynamics of those uh, um, green fraction. This green fraction can be transformed into estimate of green R index and average inclination angle. Uh, you can see here at the same, for, for the same years and same uh, dates, Uh, the uh, evolution of the green air index and the average inclination angle. And these two uh, variables can be combined to compute the fraction of intercepted radiation at the time of, of the measurements with the, with the phenotyping systems using uh, the same uh, simple equation here. And as a consequence, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can compute uh, the uh, heritability of the green air index, uh, the average inclination angle, and the fraction of intercepted radiation over uh, different experiments. So this has been done in Griou in France uh, with an experiment with 40 to 20 cultivars, three re replicates, and two modalities. And you can see that we have uh, very high uh, values of irritability, uh, generally higher than 75, uh, 0.75. And in some cases, uh, very close to, to one, actually. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite irrit irritable traits. So if we recap, um, how uh, can we estimate the fraction of uh, intercepted radiation and then estimate the radiation use efficiency? So the radiation use efficiency can be, as I said earlier, estimated by Uh, computing the ratio between uh, the total amount of radiation that is intercepted by the canopy during a, a period divided by the biomass accumulated during this period. So we start by the measurements here, uh, for example, with the phenomobile of the green fraction in, at 0 degree and 45 degree. From that, we estimate at the time of the measurement the green air index and the average inclination angle. We interpolate with time those me measurements to get continuous estimates of the green air index and average inclination angle. And then we combine them together in this equation to get a fraction of intercepted radiation. And this continuously during time, that means uh, every hour in the day and every day in the period. And for that, we need, of course, uh, uh, the um, estimates of the direct fraction and the position of the sun that depends on the latitude, the day in, in, the, uh, in the year and, and the time in the, in the day. Once we have got uh, the Fe par, we can, we can combine with the uh, amount of par, incoming par uh, every hour and then accumulate uh, integral, 
integrate that over the period to get the total amount of uh, intercepted photosynthetically active radiation. And then, uh, by dividing by the total biomass, compute the radiation use efficiency. So finally, uh, with this technique, we can uh, uh, measure the radiation use efficiency. These are uh, some examples here of the radiation use efficiency expressed in gram of biomass per uh, megajoule of intercepted radiation. So we can see for those six cultivars that we have difference between cultivars as well as differences between uh, modalities. Um, so the problem of uh, estimation of the uh, radiation use efficiency is that we need high throughput biomass measurements or estimates. So biomass currently is mostly um, measured uh, with the classical method by destructive sampling which is quite interesting because it has no bias but um, because it's very uh, expensive the spatial representativeness is not very uh, important because we have small sampling area it's a uh, low throughput and of course it's destructive and invasive so it's difficult to repeat that uh, during the season uh, many times on micro plot otherwise there will be no more material in the, in the in the macro plots. So we have uh, direct measurements maybe with robots, but the problem is that it's not yet existing. Such systems are not yet existing. Uh, it could be medium throughput and probably uh, quite expensive. But the advantage is that there is no bias. And what has been uh, developed is uh, indirect method methods based mostly on allometry, where we measure or estimate the surface from high throughput measurements from that estimate volume and then make estimate of the mass by making some assumption mostly on, on, on the density of, of, the, of the elements. So this would be high throughput, non-destructive, probably affordable, um, but it needs always to be calibrated. Uh, so we need to make at least a few measurements of biomass to calibrate uh, the amplifier relationships. And probably um, we could have possible bias because uh, the density uh, may not be the same depending on genotypes or, or, or conditions. So as a conclusion, uh, we propose a scheme to uh, compute uh, green R index and uh, average inclination from green fraction. Um, the green fraction could be easily derived from several systems as we demonstrated. Uh, when we combine uh, green R index and uh, average inclination angle, um, that can be accurately derived from the green fraction at 0 degree and, and 45 degrees, we can also estimate uh, the fraction of intercepted radiation uh, using a turbid medium assumption that applies well to wheat crops, and from that estimate the uh, radiation use efficiency um, if the biomass measurements are available. Unfortunately, um, we need uh, high throughput and unbiased estimates of biomass to provide stati statistics on the radiation use efficiency, to investigate the variability of the radiation use efficiency, and to compare the radiation use efficiency um, that is uh, modeled by, by, by the crop growth models compare that with uh, actual observations in the field and probably uh, improve the crop growth models by taking into account more uh, interactions uh, between uh, stress modules or, or taking into account uh, the germ type, probably germ type variability in the radiation use efficiency. So I thank you very much for your attention.